Hi everybody, this is Mo Volans for AudioTuts.com. It's actually quite a while since I've done a screencast um, on here and I thought I'd concentrate on something that my students have been asking me about quite a lot recently. And it's something that some of them are slightly confused and maybe slightly scared by. Um, and we're going to be talking about the mod matrix. Now I'm in Reason and I'm using Thor, but you can really apply anything we do here to any synthesizer that's got a mod matrix. And it's usually the more advanced synths. Uh, with richer feature sets. Now, when I'm teaching my students, my one-to-one -one students, synthesis, and we get to the mod matrix, I usually get a face that looks something like this. And that's because they think that it's something scary and something complicated, when in reality, it's just not. It's really approachable. It's something that's quite simple once you understand it. And um, it's something that's sort of essential when it comes to creating your own great synth patches. Now I've got Thor's Epic Poly patch loaded up here and, and if you're a Reason user you'll know this is the default patch. Uh, and it's not a particularly complex patch but it's quite a big one, let's have a listen to it. So it's sort of a trancey, classic poly, uh, polyphonic sound and it's got three oscillators but what you'll notice is that there are a few mappings in the mod matrix. And this is the Thor mod matrix down here. And because it's made up of numbers and names and a, a digital display, I think this is the thing that puts people off. Even if you're an intermediate synth user, um, this can be something that maybe, you know, you tend not to use in your patches. But as you can see, even in a patch like this, it's something that you sort of got to get your head around because most of these things are performance controllers. They're things that enable you to change the sound in real time. For instance, the mod wheel is controlling filter frequency one and filter the filter uh, resonance from filter one. And we've got two of the buttons up here, switching the effects on and off, and they can be controlled through the mod matrix in Thor. And then we've got LFOs and we've got uh, the rotary uh, knobs also controlling a comb filter. So these are all things that can be adjusted in real time uh, we're controlling multiple parameters at the same time and uh, it's really genuinely easy to set up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and demystify the mod matrix for you. I'm going to make four or five mappings on a new sound and show you that it's really straightforward and that it can really drastically alter a sound and really help you out when you're building your own patches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go away, I'm going to build a patch and come back. I'm not going to waste your time, you don't have to watch me build it. Build a basic patch come back and show you four or five simple mod matrix mappings in real time. And then in the next video after this, I'll go into the more advanced features uh, for a more advanced user. Okay, so I've made a quick patch here and I just went about it by resetting Thor uh, and instantiating a few oscillators. I've got a couple of analog oscillators. Um, I'm going to detune one of them to get it a bit of width bit of unison. We've got a wavetable oscillator in the third slot and all these are activated using these three LEDs here. I've kept the low pass uh, ladder filter, standard sort of Moog style filter with a little bit of drive. There's no effects. The amp envelope, the sustains turned all the way up. Everything else is pretty much zeroed out. Uh, there's no modulation going on. So we've got a very simple patch. So let's have a listen. Almost like an organ type effect, but really, really simple. It's a nice sound. Um, it's pretty raw, but there's not a lot of movement in it and there's not a lot of expression. And that's what we're going to try and achieve now. So let's have a look at what we can do. The first thing I noticed that sounded great was that when I moved the position on the wavetable um, oscillator, it sounded pretty cool. So let's have a listen. So let's get an LFO to modulate that. Now, this is where we need to get into the mod matrix. Now we've got source, amount, and destination. And in this first tutorial, that's what I'm gonna be concentrating on. Now the source is the thing that does the modulation. It's the thing that's gonna change the uh, eventual destination. Now our destination is the thing we want to change. So the destination is this position knob. The source is the thing we wanna to use to change it. So. I'm going to use LFO1 in this case, which is up here. And I'm going to key sync it 
and I'm going to tempo sync it, which means it'll start at the right point every time we hit a key, and it'll be in time with the project as well. Then I'm going to dial in 100%. Now you can dial in positive or negative amounts. See, if I go to the right, it's 100% positive, and to the left, 100% negative. But in this case, I want to use positive. All the, the only difference here would be the polarity of the LFO would be completely reversed. So it wouldn't make a huge amount of difference. I'm going to go with the positive. And then the destination, I'm going to go with oscillator 3 position. It's that simple. You should now hear the LFO working on that wavetable oscillator position. And obviously it's working a little bit quickly and it's perhaps a little bit intense. So we've got to fine tune these things. So let's get the rate down. And I'm going to go right down and then I'm going to go to about 70%, 60%. Bit more intense. And even that little bit of movement, I'm going to go a little bit quicker makes a huge difference to the patch, you know. All of a sudden, it's got an organic dynamic feel to it. Now, what else could we do here? Well, I want to affect the filter. So I'm going to use the second LFO on the filter. Uh, so we're going to go to LFO 2. And LFO 2 is over here. And then I'm going to dial in a similar sort of amount. I'm going to go to filter 1. And I'm going to go to frequency. Now, you'll need to turn the frequency down here. For this to work. Now we've made the sound a whole lot more interesting, but what I want to do is use the mod wheel to increase that. So it's not just LFOs and internal things we can use, but we can also use external parameters. So if I went to performance, mod wheel, and also dialed this into the filter one frequency, we're going to be able to alter that with the mod wheel. Now I need a bit more intensity there, and I'm going to start it a little higher. And then I'm perhaps going to use the after touch, so how hard I hit the key after we've initially hit it, and that's going to be under performance as well, to change the speed of that second LFO. So if I go to LFO2, there's LFO2 rate. So that was me hitting the key harder and then more gently. And you can hear the speed of the LFO changing there. Now, one final thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to increase um, a, an effect amount using one of these rotary knobs. So I'm going to switch on the delay. And I want that dry, wet signal to change. So I'm going to go to Modifiers, Rotary 1, and then I'm going to go to Delay, Dry, Wet. And I'm going to dial that in. And then you can name this whatever you like. So we'll call it Delay. <laughs> if I can type. Uh, there we go. So there you go, we're looking at five mappings and that's completely transformed the sound. It's made it much more interesting if you ask me, it's made it more uh, playable, more expressive and just a whole lot more fun to use. So in the next video, I'm going to move on and I'm going to look at the more advanced features. We're going to look at the scale and we're going to look at these double destination slots here and I'll show you uh, some more advanced routings that we can use. Hopefully this hasn't been too basic for you. I know there's been a few comments on uh, basic tutorials, but I'm trying to aim at the intermediate synthesis here. 
and uh, hopefully it's been some use to you. Uh, I'm open to suggestions. Let me know if there's any production tips you want or any synthesis tips that you like or arrangement tips uh, and I'll get into it and uh, make a few videos for you. Okay, so that's me over and out. Hope you enjoyed it.